Okay, so <clears throat> I wanted you to see some of the equipment here in action. Now, if you look down in here, I didn't fill this all the way. I'm going to make some coffee. And that's where this canteen cup, notice it's painted black. It's supposed to help the water heat up a little faster. I'll just show you how easy this is. I just put the little, that's my stove, if you can believe that. Isn't that crazy? Remember when them things, just big Coleman ones, and you had to pump them? I mean, guess if you're younger, you, <laughs> you wouldn't remember that. But all you do is turn that. There you go. That's a little too much flame, okay? Now that'll heat that water up pretty good. Now this is my bolt right here, move it away from the flames. You can see I got the got the batteries charging. Uh, now I noticed the headlamp was getting just a little bit dim. I already charged up the cell phone, which is what I'm making this video with. Uh, now here's the here's the nice thing. See this is that radio I bought. Now listen to this. Last occurred in 1931 and the record low is 45 which occurred in 1940 so that was giving me the weather report um, these I didn't really show you but uh, these are some booties for going down into the water there's a nice stream nearby let's get away from all of that I'll just swing around and show you the tent but uh, if I wanted to get a bath I would throw those little booties on and I brought a bathing suit and I would just uh, Go on down in there and uh, take a little soap, maybe, you know, you <laughs> biodegradable now. And uh, get in the water and just scrub off a little bit. The uh, the other thing, I noticed my feet were getting a little ripe. So these are alcohol wipes. And uh, what you do is you just take baby wipes and you soak them with isopropyl alcohol. And uh, that'll, uh, I'm going to cut this off just because I want to make this video and I can cut it back on in a minute. But, uh these are great. I call it a backpacker's bath because you're going to scrub under your armpits. You're going to you're going to get the lower extremities and everywhere else, uh, you know, the toes, inside the toes, uh, and just rub it with alcohol. And you'd be surprised. I remember one time after backpacking, pictured rocks for uh, nine days. Uh, I came into the the uh, ranger's office and uh, and she goes, uh, she says, "Well, you just you going out?" I said, "No, I already backpacked it." She goes, "Are you really?" I said, "Yeah." She goes. Usually the smell <laughs> of somebody after they've backpacked when they walk into the ranger station is uh, so overwhelming. She says, you don't even stink. I said, well, I try to keep uh, some good hygiene. Um, you know, on that note, I kind of, let's flip this around. You know, I kind of wanted to talk about the, the military just a little bit. Because, you know, I, I think about, you know, what I suffered through and what the guys are suffering through now. You know, we have idiots in charge of the military. I mean, I, I don't know who does the requisitions and, and, and decides on what gear you're going to use and stuff. Do you know I was never provided an alcohol wipe in the military? Okay. So I was thinking last night, and I'll get to that story later after I've eaten breakfast. But, uh, you know, I, I, I was thinking about them guys in Vietnam, and uh, they'd be out and... You know, your, your feet are constantly wet. Because, and that's what I've got to endure. I will talk about that on this trip. Everything's going to be wet the whole time. So, you know, they would probably go sometimes. So you're going to get that trench foot and stuff. If you just had a, a thing of alcohol wipes in the pack, you know, as you change, because I'm sure they were changing their socks as often as they could, trying to keep them dry, you know. But as you change the socks, uh, wipe them feet with the alcohol wipes and then put some uh, foot, you know, um, antifungal powder down in that boot, and put it back on, you know, that would have really helped them guys out. Simple stuff like that, you know. Getting off on a tangent story, who in the hell in the military approved the Humvee? Talk about the stupidest vehicle. You know, when we, when we went over to Iraq, you know what doors we had on those? Uh, they were uh, uh, vinyl doors. You could take a little handgun, a little 22 pistol, and just shoot right through the door and kill everybody in the vehicle. But, you know, the philosophy was that it was going to be for the MPs and they're going to be in the rear, so they're not going to face uh, too much combat. Oh, bull crap. Everybody in the military has to be ready for combat. I don't care if you're an airman just working on airplanes. You're going to have to pick up a rifle at some point if they're coming in on the airport and start shooting at the enemy. I mean, yeah. And then so we were going to armor them up. Well, those vehicles and the other thing, they had the batteries underneath the uh, 
the uh, side seat. So in the heat of the desert, those jet batteries would give off uh, under the passenger seat. They would give off these toxic fumes. So you're in there breathing that stuff. So now you got the doors unzipped, so you're even more insecure. And so when we armored them up, I imagine that was a problem. Now I know there was some effort to move them batteries. I don't know, that might've happened after I got back. But, uh, but that was just the dumbest vehicle. And then of course, you know, we finally made some vehicles that worked, but that was years after a lot of guys had gotten killed. You know, and if you would ask me, I mean, I, I always chose the Bronco. I mean, um, back then I had a choice between the Bronco or the Humvee. And I drove the captain around and uh, he, he said, Kirk, why do you always choose the Bronco? I said, because I can take this Bronco places that Humvee can't go. Now, granted that Humvee, he, you know, he can go over rocks and everything, but it was too wide. You know, and all, these cities, the city streets are narrow no matter where you go. Uh, I saw him bust mirrors off of that thing. Just driving here in these states, you know, you get into those construction zones and they're kind of narrow and the guys would bust the mirrors off the sides of it. I hated the Humvee. Anyway, we'll uh, we'll get the talk about trip video here in just a minute, but I did want to just kind of hit on things. You know, I've got one dry day here and uh, normally I was going to show you, yeah, normally I would have this clothesline up right here. And I would have strung it probably between either those two trees or those two trees. And and everything would be hanging up, you know. Um, but, well, we'll get into it. But the weather forecast is just terrible. So why put it up? Why am I going to do that? Because I'm only going to get a few hours of dry time, which means i got to hang out with everything because I can't leave it here and let it all get wet again. That would be stupid. So, all right, let me go ahead and eat breakfast. By the way, look at what I'm having. <laughs> Chili Mac with beef. Woohoo! Yeah, I know breakfast, but that's another thing when I'm expecting rain the whole time. You know, I want to eat a substantial breakfast. I don't want just, I got eggs and ham in the car, but uh, that doesn't hold you over. I mean, I want something that's going to sit on me like a rock for the rest of the day. So if it rains, you know, because I, I got to live out of the car. I can't, I can't stage out the site. Even the chair, you know, my chair, unfortunately, has got to go in the car. I wanted to show you this. This is that silk blanket so or silk tube so what i did last night is i just scurried up into that you know it was nice and warm put that around me and uh it, it acts as a sleeping bag you know for a warm night and that way you don't have to uh you know you don't have to just kind of lay half in the sleeping bag plus there's always bugs that get in the tent that was another thing i bought this tent years ago i'll tell you what not to look for in a tent which is what I bought. I mean, it's great. This is a four season tent, but to get into the tent, you got to unzip that whole thing right there. And uh, when you do that, if there's any, uh, if there's any bugs out, um, they just flow in there. Now at Al Royal, it was a major problem because the mosquitoes were so thick. You know, I would spend about a half hour just killing mosquitoes because once you're going to sleep, they're going to chew on you all night long. You know, you, so I've already gotten bit in the tent a couple of times and I've killed a couple bugs last night. So kind of a poor design. You know, the backpacking tent is a bit different because you're coming in the front, you're coming in a little opening. Um, and a lot of tents are that way. But I wanted a four season tent because I lived in Michigan at the time. And, you know, I thought maybe I might get out and camp in the snow. Never did. Never went out in the snow and camped. So what a waste. Uh, you know, let's go ahead and talk about it the campground a little bit before I get to breakfast. I wanted to show you the difference between a state forest campground and a, uh, and a national campground. Now, whoever years ago planned these national forest campgrounds, I, this is kind of what I expect. And they did a fantastic job. I mean, you see how there's lots of trees in here. Let's, let's just start spinning around and looking at all of this. So, now that's a campsite. You remember, remember that state forest campground we came through in Florida and the, the sites were right on top of each other. And that's kind of what you'd expect from an RV. Now there's RV sites in here. And if you look down here, look at that RV site. Isn't that beautiful? He's got so much room. If, if I could put my tent there, I would. He's got plenty of room between him and the next site. Uh, nice, nice. The only thing is the headlights, you know, coming down the road are going to hit the, hit the thing at night. But no, there's not usually too many cars. I mean, if this place was packed, and here's another thing, you know, I came in here looking for a site. Now, what you want to do is you want to be on the upper side. You know, if, if, if you got a fire, you know, like up here, let's say everybody up here is burning a fire because everybody's got to have fire when they go camping. And uh, all that smoke is just going to kind of come down into the lower 
portion of the of the campground plus at night it's you know it's a lot more moist down in there so i made sure i got a nice campsite on the upper side i would have taken this one too you know see you look look at how much distance now if, if a person comes in on this site he's going to be right next to me you know this is poor design they put the put the pad right there my pads right there and that was another thing i told you about is that pad's too level last night the water was pooling in there like a swimming pool but uh anyway but look at how much room there is between this site and the next site okay and you know there's lots of shade back in here lots of trees i can't tell you the number of times i've been to state forest campgrounds where they cut down all the damn trees and it's nothing but an open field you know for example uh let's just take the metro parks in uh washington D i mean not washington and uh in uh, Detroit or actually you know around the metropolitan area around Detroit we have a metro park system and uh, I, I know of one campground and uh, literally it was just this huge open football field of, of just land no trees no nothing even in Michigan it gets hot uh, and they had the campsites you know, boom 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 right next to each other and I even I tried I called them up I said look man I said I can take your campground and turn it into, and there was never anybody in there. I mean, who's going to camp like that, you know? And if they wanted $28 a night. Well, I mean, if you got an RV, I guess it'd be all right. But I mean, I'm not going to pay $28. i am you know what I'm paying here with my access pass? $7.50 a night. I mean, isn't that outstanding? Uh, so, and we'll get into that story. But, you know, just look at these sites. This, this is another one I would have taken gladly. You know, nothing but good sites in here. Now here's one I, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but then this is an RV site. You know, you, you're coming up, this is the bathroom. We don't, no showers here. Um, so you just, but you do have really nice uh, toilets, you know, which is nice with sink. I'm gonna go in there and shave and uh, get this scraggly stuff off my face and brush my teeth and whatnot. It's nice to have that. I mean, for seven bucks a night. Now get this, they wanted $5 a night for me to camp in the primitive area. Um, well, why am I going to camp there when I can be here for seven fifty? You know, I, I I I had planned to backpack. Backpacking's out, by the way. We're not doing that. Uh, too much rain. You know, it's uh, like sick. Well, I'll go ahead and talk about it. The weather is uh, seventy percent chance of rain tomorrow. Um, let's flip it around. We got uh, seventy percent the next day, eighty percent the next day. Thunderstorms in the evenings. Uh, it's just the worst possible weather forecast you could ever hope for. And I booked four nights. I may not even stay four nights. I mean, I'm, I'm going to just do day hikes and I hate living out of the car. I mean, if you know, if you got a zero or 10 or 20% chance of rain, you know, I would leave everything out uh, here. I feel perfectly safe. There's lots of rangers. I mean, I, I, you know, your tax dollars at work, there's like four or five or six people working here. Now they got a lot of campsites in here, but I'm going to tell you that there's not enough work, work here for that many people. You know, you clean the bathrooms and of course the, they already came through and checked me and rousted me out, said, you know, did you make a reservation? And I said, yeah, I did yesterday. And uh, well, I'll get into that story after breakfast. I got to save something for a little bit later. And, and then we're going to hike up. Uh, there's a little waterfall. I'll get some video of that. And uh, well, that's all for now. Here's that RV setup I was telling you about. Um, this is pretty cool. I mean, look, he's got his generator there, so he's going to be running that air conditioner. He's rusted camping it, you know, even because there's no electricity here, no water. Uh, like I said, we're going to find out where that gray water is. He's got a little stream running nearby. Look at that. He's got a nice tent set up. There's a motorcycle right up there. So he's got a little bit of money put in this setup. I don't know what that board is in the back, but you know, Camping's not all about roughing it. He can get in there with the rain and he'll be just fine. I know I keep saying <laughs> no more video, but there's always something that I just got to record. So I walked up here away so they wouldn't be able to hear me. But, uh, okay, you know, it's really wet. And, uh, you know, most, most of your wood's going to be wet. So, um, you know, you probably don't want to have a fire. And I told you that fire would settle into the lower places in the campground. And I also wanted to show you that the campground's empty, except for me. I just happen to be unlucky enough to be camped right next to three other people that happened. The whole park is empty, except for almost this one little section. Um, but anyway, let's go down here. And I want to, sh I want to show you the smoke because this woman, you know, wait till you see her tent. 
and she's throwing wet wood on the fire. And uh, we're just gonna kind of walk past and I'm gonna sneak a shot in here. Hold on, you gotta see this. <clears throat> but you see that smoke going down? So if you were down, down there in the park, you'd be getting smoked. Look at that tent set up. I mean, if a thunderstorm comes through, I wouldn't want to be in that. And there she is throwing wet wood on the fire. I'm trying not to get her in the in the shot. Look at all that smoke. And there's the tent. Anyway, that's it. Eat a little bit. Then, well, so much for the fire over here, right? <laughs> you could hear the storm. Boy, we had, we had a lightning strike. Boy, it was close by. Boy, the weather on this trip has just been insane. I. I believe it so i got everything buttoned down you know there's nothing on the picnic table and the tents up. so we're hoping that uh hoping this will move through pretty quick i'm just sitting in the car i don't I'd, i could sit in the tent but why you know anyway uh so just, yeah. i think this might be the last night i don't know if a front's blowing through then we could be getting some really good weather i do have one more night here tomorrow night if i want it I'm just not sure. I've, I've had it. I mean, I've just been beaten down, man. This is unbelievable. So anyway, uh, all right. But uh, yeah, this is going to be a big one. See what happens. It's, that means the tent's going to be wet again tonight.